I knew from fairly early on that I was going to uh, leave Sacramento because I wanted a broader, you know, uh, view of the world and experience. So, but unfortunately in high school, my father had a heart attack and I had to go to work. And uh, so I went to City College first because going to work at that time prevented me from like getting higher grades. And uh, so I ended up going to City College for a couple of years before I transferred to Berkeley. And, uh, but part of the reason that a lot of us went to Berkeley is because our parents told us higher education is really important and that they, you know, wanted us to do something beyond like uh, restaurant work. And the reason that they did restaurant work was so that we could do better than them. And so the only two schools that I applied to was uh, Sacramento State College and UC Berkeley. And I preferred to go to UC Berkeley because it would uh, take me outside of the whole context of Sacramento. And plus, by that time, you know, a lot of things were happening in the world, which I was starting to pay attention to. And uh, I heard that at UC Berkeley, they had demonstrations every day at Sproul Hall. And I kind of like, well, that's the school for me because of my budding, you know, social and political uh, awareness. For the first quarter, I was already like going to some demonstrations and and, and, and sit-ins to see what was happening on campus and to kind of delve into like the social political life of, you know, Berkeley at that time, which was like extremely active. And, and by, I don't know, maybe within a, few weeks of being there, I ran into people from Sacramento, including Harry Dong. And uh, we hadn't seen each other much since high school. And, uh, and we started, you know, like, uh, conversations that like, you know, help me uh, further understand what was going on. And so in that very first quarter, you know, we decided that we could be doing things together, like uh, working in the Chinese American community in San Francisco, and in, uh, including tutoring, working with different agencies, and getting in touch with the general community, you know, from like some of the uh, uh, groups that were doing things to uh, even uh, I guess like uh, I say young people and, and gangs and whatnot. And so we started developing like, uh, you know, like a, a, a regular uh, crossing the bay to go to San Francisco Chinatown to do like a lot of community work, you know. And at the same time, things were developing on campus where uh, along with like the Black Student Union, uh, Asian American Political Alliance, the Chicanos and Native Americans are preparing to go on strike or to demand the university commit to uh, developing uh, ethnic studies as a college. And, uh, but uh, it, it, came to the point where like the administration basically didn't want to negotiate anything. So we decided to go on strike and we developed 
an organization called the Third World Liberation Front, which basically was like to shut down the campus and to demand and create ethnic studies. And uh, in the meantime, you know, like I was running into a lot of other uh, Asian Americans who were involved uh, politically. And out of that, just previous to meeting a lot of these people, a lot of Asian Americans had developed an organization called Asian American Political Alliance, which, you know, within a few short months after they formed, uh, we, a lot of us joined. And that became like the Asian American arm of the Third World Liberation Front. And one of the key things about Asian American Political Alliance was like we were creating new terminology and a new identity, uh, even though it was not a national uh, organization, it was like a, mainly a political organization of combining a lot of different Asian groups that had some similarity in terms of history uh, with the United States, but it wasn't like, you know, a uniform uh, or more uniform group and then like the Chicanos or the Black Americans or uh, Native Americans. And it was out of this group that was part of the leadership of the Third World Liberation Front. And, uh, and for a lot of us who were at Berkeley at that time, that was a great advance in terms of uh, our understanding of the social and political situation at the time. And so that became the organization of our choice that uh, we would use that as a vehicle to, you know, demand from the University of California, Berkeley there, you know, the implementation of a third world college and the establishment of uh, ethnic studies. And so after, I guess, weeks of non-negotiation in university, we decided to go on strike. And uh, from that, you know, which, well, I was in Berkeley for one quarter in 1968. That's when I started there. By the winter, uh, we were, I was on strike, making demands at the university around the uh, Ethnic Studies College. And, uh, and it lasted basically another quarter, but we were able to uh, uh, actually establish and negotiate the university on certain terms of ending the strike and creating some sort of like Ethnic Studies programs. It wasn't everything that we wanted, but we got concessions. And, and in that sense, we won, you know, that battle at that time. And, uh, but it was not easy. You know, the full force of the university and in a certain extent, the state brought, you know, down upon us in arresting people, beating up people, but we were able to successfully uh, deal with that in such a way that it became uh, a very large, uh, uh, I would say mass movement at the time of a lot of the students and along with like certain university personnel and, and support from the outside, including like, you know, support from like the Black Panther Party and other groups uh, in around, you know, uh, the East Bay and, and, and the Bay Area. And, uh, but out of that, uh, we did establish Asian American studies. And, uh, and to which I would say has a very still large influence even today in terms of what's going on in, in, in the United States around the, uh, you know, stop the hate against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And uh, even though uh, I would say that uh, they're not necessarily leader in 
in a leadership role around that because it has created a certain mass movement that because of the recent stuff around um, you know the China virus, the Wuhan virus, and the Gong flu has you know created a larger mass movement of Asian Americans. But um, nevertheless, the time that I spent at Berkeley, you know, has uh, and, and the involvement that I had, along with a lot of other Asian Americans, of course, and other ethnic groups, helped create, you know, the climate. Uh, because the term even Asian Americans was a new term that was not used before or it was very used very, very, very little. And we were no longer Orientals as we were called back then. And that idea of being called Asian American has stuck for the last 50 years. It has developed in such a way that that's the terminology that people use today to describe what's going on in the uh, current crisis of like, you know, the, uh, you know, stop the hate against Asians or AAPI and that Asian American studies was a very important part of that development and uh, and it started at San Francisco State and, and, and UC Berkeley of course and we were all part of that movement there and it came out of like you know a lot of us growing up at a certain period of time in American history where, you know, uh, as I've said before, for those, a lot of us who were born after World War II, we were less than five years away from the repeal of the Chinese Immigration Act in 1943. And so we were like, on the one hand, uh, war babies and baby boomers that experienced a lot of stuff that our parents uh, uh, had to go through in order to live and deal and uh, you know survive in the United States. So our experiences are extremely important to us because of that historical fact. And the whole idea of like, you know, a lot of us moving from childhood to going to college was very much influenced by the legacy and, 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 and uh, results of the Chinese Exclusion Act, you know, of 1882. And so by the time things like going to Berkeley and dovetailing with the, the civil rights movement, the black liberation struggles, and uh, women's rights struggles, you know, make great sense that like a lot of things would be happening. And so we all became part of that one way or another, you know, it raised a lot of consciousness, you know, about what we were doing. And uh, along with like, you know, like uh, our connections to our own communities and working within them to build our self-reliance and self-determination of what we wanted to do. So the thorough strike and the whole Berkeley experience was a very major part of our lives for some of us. And uh, we participated in a willful, uh, determined way to carry out certain things that we felt were extremely important for us and you know the overall community and, and, and in a certain sense, you know, the broader world. And, and that influence has continued on today, one way or another, from everything from like, uh, you know, terminology to the sense of wanting to get things done, to understand the racism and the, the oppression that, you know, many uh, minority groups have experienced in this country. So, uh, in that regard, you know, we, uh, uh, I think, played a role. In order for the strike to succeed, given the circumstances at the time, 
it required, absolutely required that all the different ethnic groups come together to have a united front. That's why it was called the Third World Liberation Front, which meant that at that time on the campuses, the Black Student Union, the Chicanos, the Native Americans, and the Asian Americans. And it was always a belief among Asian Americans that in order to have a successful uh, strike and struggle with the university, we had to come together as a whole unit. And that was not easy to do because not necessarily everybody agreed with us, but for Asian Americans, given uh, we were one of the smaller groups, uh, we saw not just because we we're a small group, but the unity of all these different ethnic groups was an absolute necessity to form, you know, the Third Liberation Front. And we always fought for that unity, even though there were a lot of differences uh, between all the different groups at different times, we had to come to some kind of consensus of what we had to do in order to carry on the strike. And I think, you know, we were largely successful in that, in that, uh, and talking to a lot of the other groups in the past, you know, period of time, uh, they recognized that the Asian Americans were the people who were pushing to create this, you know, larger Third World Liberation Fund in order to take on the university to the extent that we still have a lot of great ties with people from those organizations, you know, from like 50 years ago. And uh, that without that, the strike would not have been successful, I believe, because no one student group, I think could have necessarily done it at that time. And it took like, you know, the coalition of all these groups in order to carry it out. And of course, not without casualties or without, you know, bloodshed, but it had to be done. And I think in, in that regard, you know, we made great contributions in terms of like uh, building coalitions, building national unity among different groups and a broader front in order to, you know, fight the system. And to this day, I think, you know, many people recognize that because even in the current uh, Stop the Hate you know, situation, uh, Asians are, or yeah, the Asians who are involved in it are trying to make it clear that this is not a uh, anti any other nationality thing like, you know, because there's a lot of, you know, anti uh, black sentiment in the Asian American community that's been going on for a long time. But groups are, you know, try to make it clear that we are not against or we're not anti-black for instance, because a number of the uh, recent attacks on Asian Americans have been uh, you know, brought on by black individuals. And, uh, but rather to build unity among African Americans in order to take on the fight to, you know, the broader society and uh, as well as like, you know, getting support from like all the different Asian groupings as well, that it wasn't just one group. It wasn't just Chinese or Japanese or, you know, Filipino Americans or something like that. So in that regard, I think uh, the Asian Americans made a great contribution in helping build a broader front and that we were, not just, we were not just in it for ourselves as our own kind of like sub uh, nationality in regards to everything from uh, fighting for our rights, self-determination, ethnic studies, you know, all the things that, you know, we set out, you know, uh, trying to do when we first arrived 
on the scene, you know, from uh, Asian American Political Alliance to the work in, in the Chinese and uh, other Asian communities. So um, to me, that's one of the great accomplishments of, uh, of the time in terms of the role that Asian Americans played. Uh, one thing that can be clearly uh, said was that the university never ever wanted things like ethnic studies. And they have been fighting and trying to destroy ethnic studies from the very beginning. It was something that we had to uh, fight for and demanded and uh, grabbed onto. And part of the reason, of course, is that uh, we always, when we fought for ethnic studies, we always knew that we were tied to our own communities because that's where we came from. And to establish a department of Asian American studies, it had to be connected to the community one way or another because that's part of our history. And part of the reason why we're at the university and part of the reason why uh, we fought the strike was to make sure that we were always connected to our communities from which we came from. And so when we finally established the Department of Asian American Studies, unfortunately in that period of time, there was no such thing as an Asian American Studies department. There was no such thing as an Asian American study professor or instructor. And so we had to ourselves create the courses that would help, you know, raise the consciousness and to connect up with our own communities. And so we developed a syllabi, the, the syllabi for the courses. And we always was trying to make and have the connections to, to our own communities. And so we had, we were some of the, uh, we were the first Asian American uh, instructors, I guess you would say, or academicians, or we tried to be. And um, we had to, in a certain sense, not only develop our understanding of our own experiences, but we also had to develop our own history in, in a truthful way of what, you know, brought us to where we were. So that meant, you know, we had to do our own research uh, at the same time connecting with our own community. And it is out of that, that we created a number of the courses. So one of the first courses that I taught, you know, because uh, in a certain sense, it's almost like we're picking straws. You want to teach, you know, and, 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 you know, of course, a lot of us said, of course, yes, because that's what we're, you're here for. And uh, so, you know, we did a lot of like reading on our own to create and to 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 uh, develop these courses, but always keeping in mind that they were connected to the communities that we came from, and so we started up uh, having this. My particular course was the, you know, Asian American Community course, where we not only uh, had our classroom experience, but you know, we also had uh, people going into the community to work to help develop their understanding and their learning and to connect up with their own history. Because, you know, um, a lot of us overall were very ignorant of like even our own history. And so within time, uh, we made Asian American studies almost like uh, uh, we even had a fuel office in a uh, you know, number of uh, Asian communities where it was, you know, uh, 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 I guess an adjunct to the university courses itself. And from there, we, you know, uh, 
students learn a lot about, you know, the conditions of their own community, be they conscious of it or not. And developed out of that a lot of consciousness among the students, as well as ourselves, because we were learning as well. And so, therefore, uh, we always wanted to keep that tie, but the university did not like that at all. And they tried every way they could to, one, make sure that we were a short-lived department and to take away our funding. But we persisted and, and it, you know, um, and it continues today, even though, like, I would say the, uh, the university itself or the people involved in the age American studies themselves have as not as many ties as we developed it in the beginning. Um, and there's a lot more, uh, I guess, well, I mean, the other positive thing that came out of Asian American studies that there were people who became academicians and were able to do more historical research and, you know, delve deeper into the history of Asian Americans overall. But at the same time, like, you know, they have, uh, uh, and then they did, and they're still making contributions, but the ties to the community is not as strong as it used to be, as we developed it at the time, and and did everything from like uh, uh, the struggles in Chinatown, in terms of like you know helping out our community to the international hotel uh, struggles, was a very much part of Asian American studies in the very beginning where we fought, you know, like close to a 10 year battle to save the international hotel from the financial district of trying to destroy that part of uh, uh, San Francisco and Manila town there. And we were a very big part of like, you know, that struggle there. And it turned out that it's one of the biggest housing struggles ever in the United States and the world for that matter, uh, in regards to like, you know, housing, uh, welfare of seniors. And that is one of the, I think, major accomplishments that we were able to be involved in. And, but, uh, you know, the university never wanted any of this stuff to happen. But because we were able to uh, take concessions from the university, we were able to build these ties to our communities to such a way that like, you know, I believe we had a, you know, pretty tremendous impact on, on, on development or, of our communities and, and the areas surrounding it. And, uh, but that's all part of like the process of like developing age American studies where one of the key things that, you know, we always wanted to do was be connected to our own communities. And a lot has changed of course since then and uh, and that's understandable. And uh, but I can see where the contributions that we made were extremely important to where even things are now, for that matter. But it later on became clear that the organizations like APA, Asian American Political Alliance, or the Third World Liberation Front would have the dilemma because it was at the university level that uh, there would be people that wanted uh, ethnic studies to go certain ways and there were others who wanted to go another way. Our original intent was that it always be connected to the community. But at the same time, we understood that, you know, uh, in order to maintain the department, you would have to have another side, which was the more academic side. And so those will always be in a certain sense. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it had to be, but it, it, it is probably inevitable that it would come to loggerheads in regards to like, you know, where you put the emphasis and, and, and uh, where different people with different points of view. Uh, the, the dilemma was that like, you know, we could should go one way or the other. And that was a battle for like number of years 
in Asian American studies, for instance, now those who wanted to who wanted to be connected to the community more, and those who wanted to create a more academic scholarly department. And those were always, I guess, uh, in the background in terms of the dichotomy of being at the university level of, uh, of, uh, of the institution. And of course the university would love nothing more than to separate us from our own communities. So there's a lot of push from the university or threats that if you didn't go one way or the other, you know, we were gonna cut your funding and all that kind of stuff. And so at a certain point, there were gonna be these battles of like, where do we put the emphasis? And I think over, over time, you know, um, Asian American political alliance became less important in terms of like uh, our attempts to connect with the community for the university, other people were able to bring into like the, 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 I guess, format of the Asian American studies into more academic, you know, role. And so in that regard, you know, there were gonna be, you know, like uh, splits and arguments and whatnot to, to, to separate the two. Asian American political lives became less important in, in, in tying our communities to the university and uh, in a certain sense, the academicians and scholars like were starting to take over. I don't know to this day if that could have ever been, we could have fought back against that because it was gonna happen one way or another, it seems like. And uh, so that's why you have this kind of like, you know, I don't know if you could call it opposing views, but it definitely, uh, a lot of like uh, uh, differences would arise uh, between you know these kind of like two factions, uh, and that's not without the complexity of the uh, the, uh, the not not the complexity but the complicity of the uh, university's role in that as well because there are always threats that you know they didn't want us they were going to cut our funding and all that kind of stuff and so. Uh, by that time, after we've been uh, working in the community for so long, we lost touch with some of the stuff that was going on at the university. And then uh, in regards to the Third Lo Liberation Front, the same kind of struggles happened there as well. You know, where uh, even though like, for instance, the Chicanos were like trying to build community involvement in their program, you know, there were forces that were forcing them to go in another direction, as well as like the Native Americans and the uh, African Americans, who of course later on broke away to become part of uh, sociology. But that uh, it's always been like the university's uh, desire to do that, and, and in large part, you might say that they were very successful. To where today, I would say that the ethnic studies department at Berkeley is pretty much out of touch with their own communities and, and, and in every way. And so that, you know, they are no longer really part of any struggles that goes on in their respective communities. And, uh, and I, this is just as true with the Asian Americans. And uh, that's not to say that there isn't any kind of tie, but it's so low right now that, uh, you cannot say that there's any community-based anything in a lot of the programs. I don't know if there's an inevitability of that happening, but uh, in a certain sense, yes. But also it meant the demise of like community-oriented community, community -oriented people who were in around Asian American studies and the other departments that there was going to be that split there and and, 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 and and it happened. I taught the Asian American community course for almost five years. And out of that period of time, we had a, quite a few students come through that we were able to, you know, affect in regards to their own views and their work in the Asian American community as well. And I think the 
I mean, there were like, there were not a gazillion of students, but we had enough come through where we had an effect on like their lives and their participation in the Asian American community. And uh, I think that's probably, I feel, uh, some of the accomplishments that, you know, I've been able to make to the overall, you know, uh, uh, movement. And, uh, but unfortunately, when we decided to uh, have our Asian American studies instructors, uh, a lot of us only had uh, bachelor's degrees and the university in order to so-called, they told us that if you want to continue uh, teaching, you would have to get higher degrees. And a number of us was not willing to do that. And uh, so there was a certain point in time that, you know, I knew that, uh, and they wanted us to change the courses to be more academic and it's like, as I was saying, uh, within time, they would probably not be able to uh, be able to teach at the university level because uh, my particular interest was not to just get higher degrees and to teach, even though that was a possibility, but it wasn't necessarily because we be, we were becoming so community involved that uh, the whole idea of earning academic degrees and teaching more became uh, less uh, appetizing, and uh, and and the demands of the university that we change our courses, you know, it just did not mix with the ideas that we had. However, in the in the meantime, we you know participated in a lot of like community events, everything from like uh, working in the uh, 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 in Chinatown, for instance, or Japantown, and in the Filipino community, for instance, particularly around the international hotel, you know, struggle. And uh, which I said earlier was like a major struggle in, in San Francisco and throughout the world. But we also did things like, you know, we took, you know, uh, in the course of like uh, fighting international uh, hotel struggle, we learned that a lot of the uh, senior uh, Manongs or older Filipino men who lived at the hotel, well, a lot of them were agricultural and cannery workers. And uh, that they, uh, retiring to San Francisco and residing at the International Hotel. But prior to that, they were involved in agricultural struggles and, and, and uh, farm worker struggles with the, uh, the Chicanos. And, uh, and not only that, but taking leader, leadership roles. And so, you know, we did everything from like taking car caravans to Delano where a lot of the center of the agricultural, you know, uh, strikes were. And we participated in helping with like uh, development of uh, Akbayani village. And we actually did uh, car caravans a number of times. And this involved, you know, a lot of like uh, the, the students that we were teaching and a lot of them have never forgotten, you know, their, their, their trips and, and, and experience of being down there among their community. And then to bring it back to the urban areas like there around the International Hotel, we established a lot of good ties uh, with the uh, housing struggle and the Filipino community. And like I said earlier, like it was a major uh, battle that happened. And, uh, but also, you know, I think we had influence in a lot of other areas of which the students in my class I had participated in. 
and they had lasting influences on their lives to the point where you know a lot of them are still you know active in one way or another with you know uh community events and 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 and, and, and social actions and the labor movement and then when we uh even um well when we started asian maker studies we when we created the uh a fuel office in San Francisco in uh, in Chinatown, Manila town there. And one of the organizations that was produced was the Asian Community Center. And out of that, you know, grew like, you know, uh, people who participated into struggles that included, you know, from like uh, uh, organizing restaurant workers to garment workers to housing struggles, to a number of different things from uh, uh, and even uh, cultural events, health fears that were a lot of ways initiated uh, by people in and around Asian community centers, the Asian community center and the people who you know, developed the fuel office there. 